So what I plan to talk about today is extending clash and coordination workflows, basically from you know, the cloud standpoint and how we can integrate at the desktop side of things, and then potentially, you know, push that back up as well. And of course, looking at our portfolio of tools to do so. So here's what I want to hit. BIM Collaborate in general. So I'll just BIM Collaborate or Pro if we were going that direction, but just kind of lightly show that because I really don't want to focus so much on the cloud. I want to focus more on how we can push that downstream into the desktop. So we've got some add-ins that you may or may not be aware of. So being able to leverage, for example, issues that are created in BIM Collaborate and push those down into Navisworks and actually work with those issues and then also you know, communicate those back if we need to. And same thing on the Revit side. So having a plugin available there where we can leverage those same issues and get those pushed into a Revit model, do that same level of interaction. And again, time permitting, I might show some reports from the clashing side of things or the, you know, the coordination reports that I could do back inside of either BIM 360 or our construction cloud. All right, so we'll jump right into it because I do have a tendency to talk way too much and I'm on a limited time frame here. Okay, so right now I am in a BIM 360 based project on our Autodesk construction cloud. So what I'm going to show is relevant whether you have a, a BIM 360 project and you're using BIM 360 docs or an Autodesk construction cloud project and you're using Autodesk docs because ultimately, once we start to push those docs into BIM Collaborate or BIM Collaborate Pro, we will have the exact same functionality that I'm going to show here. So when I say cloud for the rest of my 11-ish, 15-ish, 18-ish minutes, when I say cloud, I'm talking about both BIM 360 and our Autodesk Construction Cloud. It's just a whole lot less to say. Okay. So what I've got to find out here, just to kind of show some intent, I have a fabrication folder that's been built out. There's an electrical folder in there. There's a mechanical folder that's in there. That's great. This is housing my Revit models. So as I'm publishing and, and pushing those up and creating packages, you know, if you're using the consumed workflow, those Revit models are gonna live inside of there. Now, I also have a folder called coordination. So inside of this coordination folder, if I put on my VDC hat, right, and these can be built out however you want, right? This is just naming conventions that, that you get to determine. So a little bit different here. I've got a folder called mechanical 90%. Okay, well, what does that mean? So if I go into this, I have copies of these three models basically dumped into that 90% folder. Okay, and, and I promise that'll make sense here in just a moment. And I've also created a Navisworks folder, which I put nothing inside of just yet. And then I have, again, time permitting, I'll, I'll pop open one of these clash reports that I created inside of our cloud and, and have stored inside of here as well. So what I wanna talk about is this mechanical 90% and then also just this fabrication mechanical folder as well. All right, so what I have actually done is created coordination spaces, okay? And those coordination spaces look at either one of those folders, a collection of those folders, or I've got multiple spaces that really have different paths going on. So if I look right here, there's one called BDC Mechanical 90%. So because those are copies, that means I'm taking whatever version of those models and I'm copying them into that folder. Okay, that's a snapshot in time. It's static. If someone syncs their Revit model uh, and then we create a package, we consume it and do all that, it would have no bearing on this mechanical 90% because that wouldn't be 90%, right? That would be 94% or 96% or whatever the timeline is. So we support having the ability to think of like this archived off you know, snapshot in time. That way we can go back to it. So obviously there'd be a lot more of those. But at the same time, as opposed to looking at that copied version, you know, at that June, whatever date, you could have a live version of it. And, and, and I do live literally and figuratively with my naming there just because 
none of this is 100% live, live because once you sync, it's not like it automatically gets recognized inside of M360 or Construction Cloud, right? So you have to publish it. Once it's published, you get your packages, then it becomes, again, live. So to see how this extends downstream, because we could talk about this for, for quite a bit of time, but if I'm looking at this mechanical 90%, what I'm doing inside of here to run the clashes within our model coordination module here is I'm saying, I wanna look at, let's go electrical and sheet metal. So these are the 3D views that are in my Revit models that I've included those with my publish. Okay, so for my Navisworks users, think about, you know, if, if you were in your Revit project and you had uh, 3D views predefined in there in your template and you call them Navisworks exports and you would export out an NWC for each of these different kind of areas, right? Whether it's uh, discipline only, uh, level only, like I don't have these broken out by level, I should. Uh, I do in the live one, but just not this one. So you'd be exporting out those individual NWCs and then you know aggregating those inside of Navisworks. Whereas inside of model coordination, it's taking those 3D views from your publish and it's automatically extracting them out, right? So I get to choose what views essentially that I want to pull or again, have that aggregate you know, behavior to it. We can also beyond just RVT models, if we have 3D DWGs. So if someone was using uh, AutoCAD Plant 3D, for example, to do piping, that could be brought into this space as well. Or IFC files. IFC files are only supported by like a handful of products right now. Um, and it's uh, like Tecla, we can grab those, Tecla, Archicad, and I forget the others, okay? And the reason for that is it's, it's not on our side, it's just how those products write to an IFC file. They don't use the same element ID every single time it creates an IFC. So for example, if I was using a non-supported product that writes to an IFC, when they spit out this cooling tower, it may be element ID 12345A. Well, the next time they export an IFC file, that would rewrite to a completely different number. So that causes problems inside of here because we're attaching you know, issues and behavior to a unique identifier here. So that's one of them to, to just kind of keep in mind. So now as I pull those together, what that's going to do, yes, it's going to auto clash for me. And it's saying, hey, there's my electrical model. There's my sheet metal model. And it's grouping those clashes down inside of here. So if I want to see what those clashes are right there, right? Never happens. Cable tray hitting sheet metal. We just won't talk about whose fault it is. So it pulled those together. But one thing you'll notice inside of here is when I'm looking at this, it's controlling what I'm able to group things by, right? So it's saying, hey, it's grouping it by the object type. So think family, you know, the family name that's in there essentially. Or if I look at system name, which unfortunately, inside of electrical based content, there are no systems. But if that was a, you know, a piping model, for example, that may say chilled water supply or CHS one, you know, depending upon what your naming convention is. And then type name just starts to break it down by the individual family type name, not the actual family name itself. So those are our, our grouping mechanisms. That's only a, a fraction of what Navisworks does, right? So. I didn't show the slide about saying this doesn't replace Navis, but I'm telling you now, this doesn't replace Navis. It just kind of extends functionality. So I can't come in here and say, hey, I want to find all conduit four inches above and clash that with these uh, girders or whatever, right? So you don't have that granular ability, but this is enabling me to come in here kind of at a high level and run some clashes if I wanted to, if I see stuff, hey, that's a big deal. We've got 141 clashes going on. Literally, did you not hit anything, right? Is when you start to look at that. So if that's a really big deal, then we start to draw attention to it and we create an issue for it, right? So it's a clash, but no one's gonna know about this until you come in and generate this issue and really start to associate accountability to it, right? So if I put it on one of those trays, I get to fill out information. It does some auto-populating. For time purposes, I'm not going to you know, dwell on that. I'll just leave it generic. I'm going to sign it to myself. Well, no, let's pick on Stephen Bissett. Anybody knows him, they'll laugh at that. So we'll get that in due date. Um, we're going to make him work on 4th of July. Because it's Stephen Bissett. So it gets assigned to him, owner. Again, I get to fill out more information. Now, 
I create uh, custom attributes inside of my issues. So if you didn't know that, uh, you have the ability to. So I do this just from a grouping standpoint and you can pre-build this list, right? It's just another little filter that you can do kind of downstream. So that gets created. And at that point in time, hey, those have been assigned to him. He's getting a notification about it. That's wonderful. Now, every time I come into here, I don't want to have to uh, choose that electrical model, choose that mechanical model or all these other different uh, kind of views to pull together. So if you look, I don't have any things saved just yet, but if I go back, I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? Remember my choice here of this being the electrical versus sheet metal. Almost like search sets, you know, if you built those out and had them inside of there. And if you want other people to be able to use this, you can publish it and others that have access to, you know, the model coordination and that folder of files, then they would be able to see it. So that's great for speed purposes if you're out here. Cause like I said, traditionally you're gonna build this out by floor, maybe by area and, and kind of go that direction with it. Um, so that way, as opposed to having to, you know, scroll through here, check, 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 check. You could go down to views and right there it is. You could just, you know, shortcut to it really quick. So that's some admin type stuff you could set up, you know, on the front end to kind of build those out. And what that allows me to do downstream, let's go into Navisworks on the desktop side. So Navis Manage 2022, this works in uh, 21 as well. You will have a, an add-in that you will need to install from the add-in store. It's called Coordination Issues for Navisworks. They changed the name just a little while back, but it is a free download. And it's going to ask you to open up one of your cloud-hosted models you know, that we've got stored up there. So again, it doesn't matter whether it's been 360 or construction cloud. So it remembers there's my Fab Friday Playground. There's all those same views that were pushed up there. I'm on the same coordination space, or if I wanted to use a different one. And then that view I just created, you know, to have it pull those together for me, speeds up my life. I'm going to open it up. And here's where, like, think about if you just opened RVT files inside of Navisworks and it would sit there and, and go, that's what's happening here, essentially. Except for we're not creating NWCs. Now, I'm not a programmer by any means, maybe somewhere in cloud land that there is an NWC, but you just can't see it anywhere. It's just, it's just not there. So that comes in. What can I do with it? I can say, all right, well, let's look at the issues, you know, that are inside of here and whatever issues that have been gotten built out right there. We can see it. There's those 141. There it is, Stephen Bissett, he's got to the 4th of July, gets to see the issue, and then he can start to communicate, you know, back and forth. So, uh, you know, if something took place, maybe made a change to it, he could come back and say, hey, I've fixed all those changes, you know, I've moved all the cable tray X amount of distance, and then he could flag that as being, you know, answered, right? So once that starts to happen, move tray, keep clear. Here's that round tripping. So that's going to start, you know, pushing that thing back up there, <clears throat> you know, and kind of keeping that status going for me. So I'm able to interact with it. But at the same time, once you get here, this is Navisworks, right? This is your normal stuff that you do. So if you have your own class rules and, and all that stuff that you want to load in, great. If you've got, you know, search sets that you want to deal with. So, if, you know, if you've got XMLs built out and all that kind of fun stuff, then there you go. So here's my VDC electrical search sets. I have no conduit in this model, but if I want to grab the cable tray, look, there it is, right? So at this point in time, it's just, you just do Navis stuff. Now, if you run clashes here, there's nothing that pushes those clashes back to our cloud, BIM 360 Navisworks. It's just that communication of issues back and forth. But... If we save this as, you know, an NWF file, which is, you know, your normal type of practice, save it inside of BIM 360, it remembers that coordination space behavior, right? So if the Revit model were to get uploaded and have those changes fixed, I'm in a completely different project, but I'd go save that NWF file. If they fix the cable tray for real, and not just say it, move it up, make that change. If you have active clashes inside of Navisworks, when you rerun that test, it will change all those clashes to resolved for you. Okay, so they're gonna be sitting as active or assigned or whatever, you know, you put in your normal Navisworks clashing, but that will actually work, which is what 
uh, like glue would do that as well. And model coordination wouldn't do that until uh, I think like the beginning of the year or maybe late last year, we added that functionality. So this is your Navis workflow. Keep it, all the amazing things inside of Navisworks, do them here. Um, if you need to append other models that are not sitting inside of Vin360, let's say uh, you know, they're using AutoSprink or something like that and, and sending you CAD files or, or just NWC files from that, then you can just do your normal append and get those incorporated to it. And then on the Revit side of things, this actually gets installed from your desktop app. So, yeah, that one there. So if you go into your Autodesk desktop app, this will list there. Why the Navisworks one's not there, no idea, even though it's older. But install that. It's going to work on Revit 20, 21, and, and 22 for us. But you go to the issues, we manage the issues, and then we start to see a very similar type of look to what I had just a moment ago, right? So if I want to filter down and only see certain types of clashes, right? I've got coordination and design ones. So I incorporate the clash ones. Again, it's what are you working on, right? Or, hey, I want to see only the uh, open ones, right? So you could flag those, however you want to build those out. So that way, once you apply it, then it's going to update to just show those. Uh, so if I want to check something different than just the electrical, like here's one, you know, chiller clearance requirement. So if I were to look at it, it's going to take me to that view, shows me that issue bubble, and then I could start to see, you know, what's what's the problem with this? Okay, no tube access if they need to go in there and swap that thing out. So again, that same level of interaction that, uh, you know, if I wanted to communicate back, I could. Uh, if they said that it was moved or, you know, some other information associated to it, we could do that there as well. 